welcome to the Bauer Power Hour, where we pack motorsports, power sports, and the outdoor lifestyle with technology, innovation, news, and good times into an action-packed, dirt-flinging show. Hosted by the one and only Charlene Bauer, who's been serving the off-road industry for over 20 years. Time to throw the green flag and get ready for another wild lineup. Welcome back to another A-plus episode of Bauer Power Hour. I'm your host, Charlene Bauer, and today's show is presented by BF Goodrich Tires, Kicker Audio, Discount Tire, the Mopar Pennzoil Express Lane, and I'm Not Just a Girl. Discount Tire has over 900 stores in 28 states. I know a lot of you are on social media, and they are too. If you want them to see one of your posts, be sure to use two of their favorite hashtags. Hashtag where my tires roll and hashtag journey on. A lot of folks don't realize that Pennzoil oil comes stock in Jeeps from the factory. Did you? Well, now if you go to your local Jeep dealer, it's easy to get your oil changed at the Mopar Pennzoil fast lane any day and every day. This episode's guests are Justin Matney from RPM Offroad and Matt Messer from Trail Gear. We'll talk to Jacob Trainum for the Off-Roaders Rock section and 30-Pack Matt gives an instructional tech and tool segment on buying parts. Then we'll close out the show with another social dirt segment where we get to hear some of your crazy towing stories. But first, for some breaking news. BajaRallyMoto.com announced today the first 36 entries for the 2016 Baja Rally. They will be taking place eight months from today. Hosted by Grand Marshal Nico Saad of the San Nicolas Hotel and Casino. In addition to the first nine countries represented in the fourth annual running of Baja California's first ever navigation-based Echo Adventure rally race for motorcycles and UTVs, 13 of those entries have reserved spots aboard the Marsec Nuremberg, the Hong Kong flagged Freightliner delivering a shipment of 20 rally racing motorcycles from Europe directly to the port of Ensenada. This historic voyage is the first of its kind to import a container full of race vehicles to any such event in Baja, California. Among the 36 entrants are riders coming from as far away as Australia, India, Kenya, and Western Europe. Indications suggest as many as 16 or 17 countries may be represented at the start line that as many as 60 pilots will be taking the green flag from Ensenada on Tuesday morning, October 11th at the San Nicolas Hotel and Casino. For more information on the rally, go to BajaRallyMoto.com. When OR Fab designed its HDX spare tire carrier rear bumper for Jeep JK Wranglers, the idea was to provide a solid unit that could be opened and shut with one hand and completely vibration and noise free. Because of this, Jeep JK Wrangler owners who purchased the HDX bumper for their vehicles have given it the highest satisfaction rating among other spare tire carrier bumpers they've tried. The tire carrier can hold up to a 37 inch diameter tire and swings open with a heavy duty pivot assembly made up of a CNC machine spindle and Timken tapered roller bearings to provide smooth and rattle free operation. The tire mount is also adjustable and features heavy duty D-ring mounts. In addition, the bumper assembly comes with a high output LED third brake light, high grade installation hardware, and two D-rings. The HDX Swing Awake Tire Carrier rear bumper fits 2007 to 2016 model Jeep JK Wranglers and is available in a black heavy duty wrinkle or semi-gloss. For more information on any of OR Fab's product line, and Jeep accessories, contact ORFAB at ORFAB.com. Ram Truck Brand announces the new Ram 2500 Heavy Duty 4x4 Off-Road Package. Designed for all manners of activity, it's no secret pickup trucks spend a disproportionate amount of time in the dirt, mud, and snow when compared to other vehicles in the automotive industry. Up to 35% of pickup owners operate their vehicle in off-road environments for work and or play. Hmm. I think we all blow that one out of the water, huh? Anyways, back to the news. The new off-road component package provides the functional enhancements to deliver owner confidence off the beaten path. The Ram 2500 4x4 off-road package is a value-priced option with a long list of content that customers have requested. Package includes large front tow hooks, Bilstein monotube shock absorbers, all-terrain tires, transfer case skid plate to address the lowest midpoint of the truck, 
hill descent control, rear anti-spin differential, and a large 4x4 off-road decal placed on the rear corner of the bed. This package will be available towards the end of the year. All of this news and more is available at offroadnewswire.com. If you have offroad news, please feel free to submit it to winning at bowermedia.com. Do you want to know what cool events are happening this weekend? Check out the new 2016 Bauer Media calendar that is packed with cool events to attend across the country at bowermediacalendar.com. And if you don't already get our weekly newsletter blast with the week's calendar, Bauer Power Hour info, current news, and information from the industry, be sure to join our website and join in. You'll never be out of the inside circle again. Guaranteed. Well, let's get this show started and get to the phone lines to chat with our very first guest, brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires. Have you seen all the fluorescent orange cars running around with RPM off-road on the side when watching a score race? Well, we have the man behind them all, Justin Matney, on the line to give us an insight into their team and off-road business. Hello, Justin. How are you doing tonight? Hey, doing great, Sean. How are you? I'm doing good. So you guys just got back from the Baja. How was it? Yeah, I just got back from San Felipe. Um, you know, we've been there for a week and a half pre-running and doing some testing with the vehicles. Um, you know, I wasn't able to run the four-wheel drive truck down there due to prep issues and timing with the Mint 400. Coming up so close, you know, next week. And <clears throat> it's a, uh, you know, for, for what it was, it, um, it's okay. You know, I, I ran a little trophy truck that used to be a Class 6. And uh, yeah, we ended up losing the motor. Oh. And they, uh, my teammate, Riley, he did an excellent job. Uh, other than they had an issue with a flat, he was flacking on the washes for 25 or 30 minutes. But I mean, they were still able to pull out, I think, a second or third. Nice. Nice. So RPM off-road, as far as racing goes, what does your team look like? How is the team managed? There's quite a few cars out there. So help us understand how this is all put together as a package. Well, you know, we, we started off in 2006 racing stock full, uh, myself with RPM Off-Road and then my partner, Clyde Stacy on the racing side of the business. And, you know, we just planned on just doing, you know, one or two races in stock full, and that way I can push and promote my business and build it and grow it. And we got down to Baja, and we really got hit by the Baja bug. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, with, over the years, we progressed and <clears throat> picked up different drivers and you know, watched different people, what they were doing, you know, uh, we raced a Class 9 car, and we raced against uh, Lalo Laguna, and, you know, we watched the kid, and, you know, we're like, hey, you know, we'd like to, you know, bring you on and help you out and work with us and make you a, a better driver and <clears throat> see where we can go, and, you know, Lalo's done an excellent job, and the same with uh, Juan Carlos and Adali Lopez, uh, you know, Claude Stacy when he moved from Class 8 to a trophy truck, and he had been racing his lawn for years, and uh, he didn't want anybody else as a teammate other than Juan. He yeah. had watched Juan for years, and all this kind of progressed into what we are now. <laughs> yeah, which is huge, right? Like, you guys have some massive wins under your belt as a team and as yourself. Oh, yes. Yeah, we've got uh, 70-some wins and 20, I think 23 or 24 championships. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> that's thank you, thank you. that's huge. Lots to do in, uh, in a matter of 10 years. Yeah, in 10 years. All right. So that is great. That puts a stamp on things. How do you guys get ready for the races? What type of race prep are you going through? Do you have like a whole independent branch here just to take care of the trucks or... Well, guys and brothers, what we've been able to do is work with Rick and Jeff and the guys there um, helping prep and maintain race trucks, the chase trucks, and our pre-runners. And we've also got a couple of our pre-runners down in Mexico with some guys we've worked with for a long time that keep them prepped and going. And with just 
basically, you know, it's my sales and cost facing. Uh, in between business meetings and work and everything else, we're doing the logistics of the race and, the, and all the prep work on, okay, we've got to have this much fuel and this many pits and this many guys. Um, so it, it's a huge undertaking, you know, every year. And, you know, it's, it's better now than it was. Uh, I think at one time we raced seven vehicles and about 1,000, and, you know, now we're racing three to four. And, so now it's much easier. <laughs> you know, all the vehicles on the same fuel, they have the same wheels, mm. tires, and spares, so it, it does make it a lot easier. But, you know, Rick and the guys, they've done an excellent job on prepping the trucks and working with us, and, you know, we're really happy to have them. Yeah. How many guys does it take when you go down to Baja or to a race? Uh, it varies. You know, from Baja 250, 500, 1,000. Uh, a usual Baja 1,000 uh, total with our volunteers that come down and help us. Uh, we've got usually between 90 and 100 people. Wow. Wow. 90 to 100 people to put three to four cars on the track. It's a non-stop process. I mean, you've got to think when you're pre-running, you know, we mark bad sections that could be, you could come through and they could be filthy and could potentially get stuck in someone's dust and get the vehicle stuck, so we station different chase trucks out in the areas. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's just a lot of logistics. Yeah, and that's true. A lot of racing nowadays has to do with logistics. Like, if you don't have your logistics right, truly you're not going to win. Is that fair? Oh, that's, that's completely fair. Um, you know, it's uh, the part of the 425 that we just won in. Uh, coming down to the last lap, we were struck in the dust of uh, another competitor in a, in a lower class. Um, I think it was a service truck spec, I'm not sure, but we were stuck in dust at 41 miles. And on the radio, we kept you know, hearing that boss was closing in on us. And <clears throat> finally, we were able to get logistically uh, the guys that were getting split times and said, you know, we've got a few minutes on everybody. So uh, we were able to back the truck down just a little bit and be able to secure that win. So it's, I mean, logistics is honestly everything. Yeah. Technology and innovation is something I always love to talk about, and especially with somebody like you that is at the pinnacle of the different classes of off-road vehicles. Um, what do you guys feel like you're bringing into your team as far as technology and innovation goes? Well, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, everything in the trucks, you know, us doing the prototypes, all-wheel drive, chubby truck, um, <clears throat> the communications, running the MSAT radios. Uh, we're using different timing apps on our crew's phones so they can actually click off as each person goes by and so they're doing pen and paper and that we can actually know. Uh, <clears throat> you know, keep better track of everything, how much fuel you take at each pit, uh, if you take tires. So in the race, we can actually have a full overview of how the race <laughs> went and how it actually works logistically to know if we need to change something or what we've got to work. Tell us about this four-wheel drive truck. Mm. This is really cool and interesting and new, right? It's, uh, you know, there's a full job deal. It was one of those things that uh, Claude and myself had talked to Rick about. Uh, I think it was, I'd say, two years ago. And we discussed the idea and kicked it around a little bit. And obviously, you know, with Pro Tour racing, the technology was advancing in the drivetrain world. The Ultra Tour guys, the King of Hammers guys, you know, all that was advancing. And they, uh, you know, we saw an opportunity to, to strike when the, the parts are available. And obviously, it, it didn't work right out of the box. You know, we, we did Vegas Arena. We completed our first race without mm -hmm. any hiccups. Mm -hmm. And then after that, as we were driving the vehicle harder and harder, we started to see what parts were failing. And mm. we used everything from drive lines to, to outfit shafts to CDs to <clears throat> I mean, it was just unreal. And, they, um, you know, we just kept kept going back to the drawing board and figuring out different technologies and what we could put into the truck and do tons of testing. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like you're still kind of in that learn testing phase or do you feel now that, okay, we got this, we understand where we're at and we're mastering it? Well, I mean, I think what we're getting, we're, we're obviously growing the leaps and bounds. Yep. But, you know, the technology is changing every six months, it seems. You know, whether it's team wants us to run a different shock or if it's BSG mm. wants us to try a different tire. Um, you know, it, it's always advancing. So I would never say we're at a, ever a mastery point. <laughs> 
do you feel like the technology is really on the gas right now where so you've been racing for 10 years do you think that it's like going up at a quite an angle as far as the technology yeah i mean i believe so i mean if you look across the board on the lights the shocks the tires um i mean everybody is, is growing in leaps and bounds even with the safety uh you know the head yeah the, the suits are now much lighter you know they get a better fire rating um Yeah. Yeah. That's great for our world. No, I love it. That's one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why we're doing this show is because of all the technology and innovation and seeing how it's relating to you as a racer. You know, is it making it easier, more difficult, or more challenging? <laughs> oh, exactly. I mean, and, and, and you know, that, that's part of it. You know, I mean, I suffered a, a back injury last year and I went and talked with, uh, with Impact Racing with Robbie Pierce. And, mm. You know, we're sitting in the seats, and, you know, I have a long torso, so what was happening was the, the seats, as the shoulder harnesses come through, it was actually compressing my spine as soon as I would sit and tighten the belt. So they were able to develop a new taller seat that they, uh, has been excellent. So, I mean, the comfort nice. level is, <laughs> you know, 100% better. Yeah. So, you know, racing and being safer is, you know, excellent. Yeah, nice. Well, we have to work. So we can go play, right? That's on Sunday, so on Monday. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's part of the game. And, you know, with, with the racing side, it's obviously we have to develop relationships with manufacturers, or it's trying out different products that, you know, we can take right to the direct consumer and our customer. So what is RPM Off-Road as the business? You know, RPM Off-Road is a, uh, it's a performance warehouse that we do, you know, everything from Land Rovers to Jeeps, lift kits, diesel performance, gas performance, um, you, you kind of name it. And we're getting ready to launch our new website here in the next week or so. Mm. And uh, yeah, we've added a lot of new products. We've teamed up with uh, some great companies on doing some different Baja excursions that our customers can purchase directly from our website. That's something that no one else has done in the automotive side. So it's, uh, it's going to be exciting. Oh, okay. So let's let's hit on that for a second. Uh, Baja excursions. So that means that they get to go down with you and mm -hmm. see Baja? or. Well, what I've done is I've called and talked to Wide Open. We've talked to Ford. And we've talked to a uh, Zero One Odyssey and, you know, to help establish, because I always have the questions from customers or, you know, friends or things like that. You know, how can I get to do this? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a whole different ballgame, which we have had people do that. And, yeah. But, you know, for the standard customer that, you know, they want to go to Vegas and they want to go out and enjoy themselves or family in a buggy for a day and get a really good experience, that's, you know, an excellent way to do it. And, they, uh, you know, we're trying to help market to that. Yeah. So it's more of a day experience versus a racing experience. And it can be a racing experience. You know, all the mm. companies, they do offer a racing experience if the customer wants that. They Very can do fun. It in the United States, in Best and Desert, they can do it down in Baja with schools. Um, and they've got a lot of great programs. So and they're, they're adding their programs also that we've been talking about. So I'm excited to work with them and actually go out and do some testing with the guys who do the driving. Very fun. So RPM Off Road, uh, mostly a bolt on accessory shop, or do well, you guys build your yeah, own it's, products? It's kind of a little bit of everything. We do have uh, we do have our own line of uh, we have some axle products. We have some diesel performance products through RPM Off Road. We have a fabrication side of the shop that actually is currently right now building three Jeeps uh, that are rock crawlers for customers. Mm. So you know we're doing the four link, the roll cages. <clears throat> engine swaps, um, it, it's kind of a, an all-around shop. So the one thing that's hard for us is to tell a customer no, <laughs> because everybody else tells them no, and, you know, whether it's a product they can't get or can't find, and that's one thing we really try and help the customer and guide the customer, you know, the best we can and getting the right products and the best experience that they want. So, like I said, we've worked on everything from Dodge Vipers, Porsches, Range Rovers, um, Cool. You name it. We, we pretty well had our hands on it. And where are you guys located? We're in Bristol, Tennessee. 
Bristol, Tennessee. So for the most part, if somebody wants their vehicle worked on, they need to get it to you, which happens quite a bit. It happens. Uh, right now we're booked out four weeks. Uh, that's been about the norm. Nice. Um, and you know, we have customers from all over, whether well, not just right here local to us, from Virginia and North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Kentucky, Alabama, Ohio. Yeah. Um, so I do travel to us. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a sign of your reputation and quality, I would say. Yes, and, you know, the racing all goes back to that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was lucky enough uh, one day that uh, we just came back from racing, and a customer and his son, son of four, about 10, um, had drove all the way down from Ohio, which is about a seven, eight-hour drive. Mm-hmm. So I had a lift kit, wheels, tires, and salt, and they were in the showroom, and they recognized me, so I talked to them and signed posters. And, cool. You know, they had seen us racing on TV, and that's what they, uh, that's how they found us. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we have all the work that goes in in the shop, but then we also have all the work on the, but then we also have all the parts that you're shipping out, right? You have a whole online segment as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah when they're shipping out every day, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's, it's nonstop. And shipping and receiving, that's why we get, it seems like EPS trucks, there's three times a day, <laughs> So when you guys come up with your own parts, right? RPM off road. We're gonna brand it. You say, what? We're missing something in this category, and we know we can do it better. Or what's your group? How's your group work together to make those decisions? A lot of it is that. A lot of it is, you know, there's a need for this part, and you know, nobody's doing it, or you know, we can make that uh, lighter, stronger, better quality, better price, um, better design. So it is very on what product it is. Um, you know, and there's a lot of things that we're looking at doing and working to go to some manufacturers this year. I can't state as of right now. Mm-hmm. But they um hoping to be seeing a lot more working out this year. Nice. And of course we know you test your products racing, but is there other ways which you do that? Well, outside bar racing obviously here in Virginia and Tennessee in the mountains we have our rock crawler guys and we have our diesel guys that have the performance to do a lot of drag racing. Um, we've got a diesel dragster we're building actually right now in the shop that's going to be pushing probably 1,800 horsepower. Oh, cool. Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to try things out with customers. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do have a select few customers that if we do have a come out or whatnot, we'll say, hey, we're going to install us, you know, we're not going to charge anything, but you try it out, give us some feedback. And uh, you know what happens a lot in manufacturers, they send us, you know, whether it's tires or, or lights or things like that, to let us try out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of their, their, their test guys. Nice. Nice. Um, okay, so big picture question. You've been in racing for 10 years. How long has the shop been around? The shop has been around 10 years. It'll be this, uh, this August. 10 years. All right. What have you seen has changed in the off-road industry the most from your eyes? And you have quite a perspective because you've been racing and in the business side. Oh, I mean, there's so many things that change. It's it's really hard to pinpoint just one thing. You know, obviously, you know, the the tire manufacturers that come out with with better sizes or lift kits and the wheel companies have come out with the, the correct offset to give the customer plenty of, Different choices, you know. Um, I remember when the new Toyota Tundras came out, there was two or three different wheels and one size <laughs> that was available, and it was kind of, you know, crazy. But it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, everybody's kind of grown to it. You know, the, the lifted trucks of yesterday, everybody was scared to death to having these daily drivers, you know, for wear on ball joints and tires and things like that. And now the lift gets, I mean, it's, they're, they're great. They drive excellent. Um, yeah. 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 I know. It's awesome. What's a piece of advice that you would like to give to, let's say, a racer or somebody that wants to be in the business side of off-road? Maybe something that you give pretty consistently as a piece of advice to somebody. Well, the first thing is uh, you no longer have a seven-day 
<laughs> no that's joke on that. And that's on the business side and the racing side. Uh, it, it nets really in. Um, you know, it, 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 it takes a lot of work. And the, uh, you know, people that can, you know, keep their head down and stay focused and continue to grow and, and hire great guys and do good training, you know, all these things are great qualities, and that's what it really takes for a successful business. Yeah. Um, it's really to stay after it and continue to innovate, continue to, to do new things. Don't don't stay you know happy with what you've got. Continue to look forward. Yeah. Um, you know, we started the process doing hydro dipping at our facility just because the dealerships we were dealing with wanted to make different package vehicles. Um, so the customers didn't like the wood interior and you know, things like that. Yeah. So we started doing carbon fiber packages for them, and they um, you know it, it just constantly looking outside at what else you can do. Yeah. Um, to tie right back into your market. Yeah. Um, I love it. Well, one of my favorite questions, zip ties or duct tape? <laughs> well, if you'd have said gorilla tape, I'd have said gorilla tape. <laughs> you know, Many times that has saved me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best story? Awesome. Awesome. Well, you can find out more about RPM Off-Road online at rpmoffroad.com on their brand new website that'll be coming out and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at RPM Off-Road. You got a final word for us tonight, Justin? I'll just say thanks for having us on and hopefully we'll be back here soon. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now we'll roll into our next guest brought to you by Kicker Audio. Well, we have one of the Toyota part leaders on the phone, and I will add over the years has spread their product line into Jeeps, Nissans, and Suzuki's. Trail Gear has supported the off-road industry from sponsoring racing events to participating in many of the land fights. Let's welcome Matt Messer from Trail Gear to the line. How are you doing tonight? Uh, doing great. Thanks, Char. Thanks for... Uh making the time for me to be on the show. Oh, I'm really excited to have you on the show. I know that you're always busy and always out, like chasing the next big thing is what it feels like. You're always coming out with something new. How do you guys do that? <laughs> well, a lot of it just comes from, you know, my passion, uh, you know, for the business and for the industry itself. You know, I mean, I still love to go to work every day. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of goals uh, that we've set. Uh, for the company and you know I'm still passionate about it that's the bottom line yeah so I gave trail gear a quick introduction but what is it most known for the products or yeah you know I think uh, it, we're probably biggest uh, known biggest for our Toyota product line mm -hmm. but uh, you know over the years we have expanded into uh, a lot of uh, buggy parts racing parts um, we're now heavily into Nissan um, like you mentioned, Suzuki, and even a few Jeep parts. But uh, I think one of the, the bigger uh, notable items is our great customer service, um, our great pricing, and then uh, one of our uh, biggest things that we hang our hat on is our availability of product. We, we always uh, want to have the product on the shelf and available. So when somebody is thinking about trail gear, like what category of product lines are you providing? You know, we really cross the complete gamut uh, mm. as far as product line goes, and that sort of sets us apart uh, from the other uh, people that are in the industry. I mean, we, we're not just a steering company. We're not just suspension. 
you know, we do all of it from, you know, drivetrain, steering, uh, suspension. We do, um, I mean, we just, almost every aspect. We get into the builder parts. Um, we really just almost cover every aspect of the vehicle at this point. Now, are these true trail gear parts, or are you also then selling other people's parts as well? You know, almost all the products that we sell, um, we design in-house and manufacture ourselves, either through our vendor base or directly uh, right in our facility in Fresno. So how do you come up with a part? Let's go through this whole series, because I, I can just imagine your brain just going wild in the background. How do you come up with something? How do we R&D it? How do we test this? Take us through the process. Well, um, we'll talk about one of our newest products, and that cool. is our Duraline uh, winch ropes. Okay. And, you know, we've been in the recovery market for some time just because it's a product that, Really, we need to sell. You know, it, it's a product, it's an accessory that, that every off-roader, um, you know, needs on their vehicle. So we got into it several years ago. But the issue is your winch line always breaks when you don't want it to. You sure. Know, something happens, boom, the line is snapped. You're like, oh, my gosh, that was like 300 bucks. You know, oh, well, you know, tie a knot in it and we'll, we'll get off the trail. So, you know, it just... We look at those t types of failures, um, and, you know, these are the things that happen to us personally as far as myself and then a lot of my employees, a lot of my friends, and it's like, dang it, I just wrecked another winch row. Right. So, you know, we looked at it and said, well, what causes the failure? You know, we started examining the ropes, and we found that a lot of the ropes, um, nobody does the maintenance on. I mean, that's the last thing that people... Uh, you know, when they get back from an off-road trip is, is actually look at their winch line. They're sure. just happy that yep. the winch line worked the one time, got them unstuck, they're <laughs> off the trail, and now the truck's in the garage or parked on the side of the house or whatever, and they're never going to use look at that winch line again. So we're like, well, that's the biggest issue is, is, is no maintenance. So hmm. we looked at it from the standpoint of we need to protect the rope. So now uh, we're now offering what we call ExoShield, uh, which is the same denema uh, material that makes up the core of the rope, is actually overwrapped uh, the entire outside of the rope. So it's completely protected, and the bottom line is it protects your investment. I mean, you can drag this thing through the mud, drag it through the sand, drag it over rocks, and just forget about it. It's now a maintenance-free rope. So is that something that... Um, you put over another rope line, or is this something that comes as part of a winch rope that you sell as a kit type of a deal? Is this something that we replace, or how does it that work? Yeah, it comes complete. I mean, if you're in, in the market to purchase a winch rope, you definitely should uh, get on the Trail Gear website and check it out. Uh, you, is, we still sell the standard Denema uh, 3 8 winch lines, um, but if if you want the ultimate and you want to protect your investment, you can buy the Duraline ExoShield product, which comes, cool. uh, like I said, completely overwrapped. There's a couple other cool things about it. The, the first 12 feet of the rope is actually overwrapped in red Kevlar. And the Kevlar material is, um, is extremely uh, heat resistant. So I don't know if you've ever seen a winch rope come off the drum uh, the actual part that's wrapped around the drum, nine times out of ten, they're completely melted and uh, not really usable at that point. Yeah. So um, we looked at that as well. And we're like, well, let's let's solve that problem. We'll put the uh, the Kevlar over that. That'll cover the first layer of the drum, and then the rest of the rope was overwrapped with the uh, Denima material. Hmm. Okay, so you come up with your parts list by wheeling because that's what you do. You race, you wheel, you have fun. How? Yeah, a lot of it is is through wheeling a lot of it's through frustration of, of <laughs> you know having a product on the on the car that just you know fails consistently or is not easy to install or uh sometimes it's like oh man it'd be cool if we made this this would be awesome product so let's make it so you come back to your group and you engineer something that's right and then once you guys come up with this great idea, how do you go into the R&D phase? What are your tools? 
Well, basically, I mean, the, the very first phase is to sit down and have a design review meeting. And, uh, you know, we sit down as a group uh, with our marketing team, with our engineers, and, and even our, our purchasing team so that we can get everybody's, uh, you know, knowledge all in one room. And, and we talk about the product and what we want it to do and, you know, what we don't want it to do. And uh, that's the very first step from there. You know, we actually get the drawing uh, detailed. Mm -hmm. uh, have further design review meetings and uh, move into prototype stage and actually get prototypes built. Um, sometimes we build them in the house, sometimes our vendors build them. And uh, from there, we would uh, move into the testing phase, which, um, you know, real life testing is obviously great. We give a lot of the products out to our sponsored drivers. Um, I use them on my car, Olivia on her car. And Many of our employees uh, would use them on their vehicles so that we can get really good feedback. Yeah. And then to, to take it to the next level, um, we actually would build any sort of uh, equipment that we need to complete the destructive testing process mm, okay. right in-house. And that's something that um, you don't see that every day. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that, that I really love about what we do because at the end of of the design process there's nobody that can tell us anything more about our product mm. I mean, we have tested it to failure we've built a piece of equipment that's going to test the product that's going to fail the product i mean it is it's really fun it's it's, it's a lot of fun to uh to take it from concept through prototype testing and then finally seeing it used and, and sold on the open market. How long does that usually take in your group? Just on an you know, average. I know everything depends, but. Yeah, I mean, it could be a very simple part to uh, a, a very complex part. You know, in the case of Duraline, you know, we spent a significant amount of time. Now, obviously, we're not winding the ropes ourselves, but we are. Uh, very, very close with our vendor that is um, winding those ropes for us. And there's actually a great video, uh, you know, how Duraline is made. It's almost, you know, like the TV show, how it's made. You <laughs> cool. know, if you get on the website, you can watch that, and it takes you through every single step of how that product, you know, starts out as the Denema fiber, and then it's wound through the, the first machine, and then the second machine, third machine, all the way through pre-stretching of the rope and dyeing it. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a lot cool. of fun. Cool. So I kind of alluded to it, and you just alluded to it, too. Let's, uh, let's roll out of our CEO hat and roll over into our racing helmet. Um, <laughs> you and Olivia both compete, and Olivia is your daughter, and she just started rock crawling, but you've been rock crawling for a long time. So give us kind of your history in the rock crawling arena and the ultra four arena. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's really one of the reasons why I started trail gear was my passion for, for the rock crawling. Uh, I think I first, first competition I ever saw was around 2000, maybe 2002, somewhere in there. And I uh, saw Shannon Campbell roll his single seat car over, land on his wheels and take off again. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. This <laughs> right? is what I want to do. That's so cool. So that kind of fueled uh, my passion to, to really get into competitive rock crawling. So immediately, you know, I did what I could at the time, and, and we built a Toyota, which obviously is in my blood. And uh, we, we started with that, and, and we, we won some series and uh, worked our way up through the, through the different classes. And, you know, now we're in the unlimited class, and... Uh, my daughter, like you mentioned, Olivia, is now uh, competing in Unlimited, which is, it's it's a lot of fun. It really has uh, made it a family event for us again. Yeah, and how old is she? So, she is uh, 15. Yeah. And she's actually be 16 uh, in about a month. So, so cool. We're trying to get her FJ80 up and running for her. Yay. Yay. Oh, that's cool. What a cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh rock crawling is fun but then we got into this rock racing phase and you jumped right in with it yeah we we went right into the uh you know we've been involved in in the king of the hammers ultra four racing uh really from 
the very first year, the OG 13, uh, one of my employees went down and raced that race, and then uh, it just exploded from that point on, and, and I think we've been doing it for, for almost 10 years now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, a couple of different vehicles from solid axle cars all the way to the, you know, 700 horsepower IFS cars, and, uh, you know, as Greg Adler called me up a couple of years ago and said, hey, I want to buy your car, and uh, I ended up selling it to him and uh, really have taken about two years off from racing and it's been it's been a great two years but i'm ready to get back back after it so we're we're about halfway through a new build right now oh very cool so we'll see you back out on the series we will be there definitely and we're, we're really excited about it so how does racing for you i mean i know it's fun right like that's our weekend fun we get to go out we get to enjoy the camaraderie of everybody but at the end of the day too let's not let's be real like you're bringing something back to the business every time that you go out. What are some of the things that you're thinking about uh, on your drive to and from or while you're at the events that say, you know, I need to deal with this at Trail Gear? Oh, geez. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, you know, that's that's one of the key things that I've really learned um, is, is to keep your priorities in check. Um the Ultra 4 racing, as fun as it is, it just takes uh, an extreme amount of time. Uh, if you were to try to race the entire series, um, I mean, it, almost each each event turns into a week. You know, when you look at travel time, right. qualifying, and, and uh, you know, just being there at the event and then traveling home from the event. So for me, um, it's about priorities. And, and right now, trail gear is absolutely my top priority from a business standpoint, I mean, it's, it's everything right now. And uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of cool things happening at the company. And, uh, that's really where our focus is at. And that's why it's taken so long to get the new car done. We're just taking our time and, and, uh, doing things right. Well, and uh, something else, maybe not a lot of people relate to, but long field, uh, super axles, you took over that company last year as well. That's right. That's right. It was actually in 2013, uh, it was it that long ago? How embarrassing. Yeah. It feels like yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. Time flies. It's, a, it's crazy. We're already in, in the middle of February. It's yeah. Amazing. But, yeah, that was uh, an exciting time for us, and it's just been a, a great success story for us. I mean, I've known the long, I mean, as long as I've been wheeling Toyotas, you know, Tina and Bobby, and we've, we've been friends forever, and, you know, we just got to the point, and, uh, you know, Bobby passed, and, and Tina you know what, Matt, I, I told Bobby I'd run this thing for a year. I've run it for a year, and uh, I, I can't think of a better company that could take the, uh, the long field torch and, and continue with it. So cool. it, was, it was honoring, you know, to be able to do that and uh, continue the, the tradition. And uh, it's been great. You know, we've, we've, we've made a lot more improvements to the product. They're now gun drilled. Um, Every product that we sell under the Longfield name is gun drill, except for the, uh, the little baby samurai ones, which is mm. not enough real estate for that. But, sure. Um, we're, we're continuing to expand that line uh, almost monthly. Oh, nice. Nice. When I say technology and innovation, how does that strike a chord within your business or your racing? Um, it's really something that... Um, you need to uh, keep up with. If uh, I'm a firm believer, if you get comfortable, um, time is just going to pass you by, uh, especially in the business world. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen companies just sort of have great success, and then they don't produce anything new, and they just sort of, you know, die on the vine. And uh, that's something that, that we're not interested in. We're always <laughs> forging uh, forward uh, with, you know, being more efficient in everything that we do, um, creating, you know, a better experience for our customers. Um, we're, we're even doing it internally for our employees. I mean, that's, that's one of our big things this year is, is really building the structure into the company. And it's, it's not just, you know, Matt Messer's trail gear. It's, it's, it's everybody's trail gear that works there from the guy, you know, that's a new hire that's just learning the ropes all the way up to, you know, the executive offices. I mean, it's, it's, uh, 
it's a lot of fun. We're, we're really changing the culture of the company right now. It's, it's fun to see. Cool. Well, let's hit reverse because there's always a great story behind this question. How did Trail Gear start? Did it? <laughs> yeah, you start laughing. So I know there's got to be something good there. You know, I've been involved in trail riding, outdoors, four-wheel driving my entire life. I mean, when I was a little kid, you know, my dad would, you know, throw me and the brothers in the Jeep and, and off we'd go and we'd go run, you know, the Ducey Urshan Trail or, you know, some of the other great local trail trails here in uh, Central California. And so it's been in my blood, you know, yeah. my whole life. And so I, I can't even remember how many Toyota trucks I've built, but I got to the point where, um, you know, you get married and you have nothing, you have no money, yeah. you're in college and you're like, man, well, I got to sell all my stuff. So then, you know, you graduate, you get a job and then you're like, all right, I think, I think I can afford, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a Toyota truck and get back into this <laughs> thing. Right. So, you know, you tell your wife, you're going to eat top ramen for two months and, Long story short, I, you know, saved money for months and months and months and, and bought this steering kit, and it was like 1400 bucks. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is way too easy. I can make all this stuff. This is what I do. So, you yeah. know, mechanical engineer, that's, that's what, uh, what I've done my whole life. So um, really just started making uh, some products for myself and then people saw them and said hey that's pretty cool can you make some for me and i'm like heck yeah no problem and sure. one thing led to another and one thing led to another and pretty soon it was like you know what i think i can do this and i think i can do this better than anyone else so you know we looked at the industry and and some of the ex- really the bad experiences that we had personally as a as an end user and a purchaser of products. Yeah, yeah. We're like, we never want to do business that way. We want to do it our way. And, uh, you know, we just went for it. And that's, that's how we got started. And when was that? What year was that? That was uh, in 2005. Awesome. So we're, we're ten, celebrating our 10th year of business this year. Congratulations. It's a huge milestone for us. It is a huge milestone. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we're continuing to grow as a company. We're actually going to be breaking ground uh, on the lot next door. That'll give us an additional 25,000 square feet. Wow. So, I mean, we just got, we've got so many cool things happening right now. It's just uh, a great blessing. That's so exciting, Matt. Well, how big is your facility now? Well, we're in two buildings right now, so each building is 25,000 square feet, so we've got about 50,000 square feet, and we're just we're just busting at the seams right now. Mm. We've got purchase orders for uh, new equipment that we don't even have a place to put yet. So we're just pushing super hard to get the new building done. As soon as that's done, then we can uh, we can start moving the equipment in and, and you know start that whole phase. I may be putting you on the spot here, but how many products do you have in your line? Do you know offhand the number? Um, it's nearing 2,000 products. Wow. Um, two, two years ago, we were around 1,600 products. Now, I mean, we're almost 100 products a year, you know, and some of them are, you know, you, I say 100 products a year, some of them are, is a nut and a bolt, you know. Fair, but, fair. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, substantial products, probably 50 a year. Yeah. And uh, we, at any given time, we have over 100 products that we're designing. Wow. So, um you know, we work on what, what's hot and, and what we can get done, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very dynamic place to work. Yes, I bet. I bet. Well, one of my questions uh, that I always like to ask somebody like yourself is, how have you noticed the off-road industry has changed since you've started? Let's that, say the you know, company. I, Let's say the company that, 10 years ago. Yeah, I think that, uh, that, that you know, I... I saw that question and, and I, I didn't have a great answer for it. I think um, I think I can go back to uh, really the technology question and getting better at what you do. You know, taking better care of the customer. I think as a whole, I think the industry is is improving uh, with their level of customer service. I mean, as, as technology increases and people use it, uh, you know, things seem to get easier 
Sure. You know, products are easier to manufacture depending on equipment. Um, you know, the, the whole web e-commerce side of it, things are easier to do on the, the e-commerce side. I think everybody's really, you know, kind of moving forward at a pretty good rate. Cool. Cool. Well, favorite question, zip ties or duct tape? <laughs> Bailing wire. How about that? Bailing wire. What's your best story? Oh, what's my best story? Best bailing wire story. Oh, best bailing wire story. Well, okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know what year it was. <laughs> King of the Hammers. Uh, Nick and I are in the car. This is our little turbocharged four-cylinder car that we had such great success in. Um, it's funny, actually. I'm pretty sure it was the year Lauren, Lauren Healy won the first time. And we had just passed Lauren and Brad Lovell. I think it was on Sunbonnet. And we exited, got out into the desert, and we lost power. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I think this engine just blew. We get out. The turbo is hanging by the cooling lines. Oh. I mean, it, it broke off the header. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, you know, Nick, he jumps out. Yep. But he's, he basically, with bailing wire, got that thing sitting on the header enough to where we could we could scoot along to the remote pit and get it welded on. But, nice. Yeah. Bailing wire holding the turbo on. Bailing that's, wire for the win. <laughs> yep, that's the best. <laughs> well, you can find out more about Trail Gear online at trail-gear.com. On Facebook under Trail Gear, on Instagram at official underscore Trail Gear, and on Twitter at Trail Gear. You got a final word for us tonight, Matt? Uh, you know, I just appreciate the time uh, to, to get on here. It's it's always a pleasure to spend time with you, uh, talking about stuff and, and really sharing uh, sharing about trail gear and, and just our adventure as a company and, and what we're doing. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing a lot a lot of uh, new products coming from, from yeah. us this year. So stay tuned. Yeah, that's exciting. And congratulations on your 10 years. That's so exciting. That's yeah, fantastic. Yes, yes. Well, thanks for joining us today. And now we'll join Jacob Tranum from Off-Roaders Rock, brought to you by Discount Tire. When you're driving down the road, the last thing you want to think about is tires. Trust Discount Tire to get you up to speed on the right tire for your vehicle. Log on now to DiscountTire.com for the best deals on tires and wheels. We're America's largest independent tire store. Come check us out, and we'll show you why. And remember, if ever you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Today on Off-Roaders Rock, I'm happy to introduce everyone to Jacob Tranum, who has a heart of gold. He seeks out folks with challenges and builds a vehicle for them. But there's a lot more to the story, so we'll let Jacob get in here. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Good, good. So you've told me a little bit about what you have going on and the vehicles that you build for people. Um, fill everybody in, and then I'll ask you some questions along the way. I've been able, I've done a, a couple of different ways, but pretty much I steal people's vehicles uh, that have had hard times or gone through a lot, and I uh, completely trick them out. I mean, pretty much just like the show Overhauling. Nice. Uh, some of them we, we steal without them knowing, and we have it for a week. Uh, some of them we buy a brand new vehicle, completely build it out, um, everything you can imagine, and then just surprise them with them. But we've done everything from uh, burn victims to uh, soldiers who have lost legs uh, to quadriplegics, uh, believe it or not. So how do you come up with the people that you do these builds for? Where do they come from? Are they your friends, family? Um, none of the people that we've done builds for, I, I've known on the front end. Uh, typically, I, I search them out. Um, I, I get involved with uh, local. Uh, well, the the first one, the the fire victim, I actually had the fire department call me wanting to sponsor a concert, and I knew that we wouldn't have the funds to sponsor the concert. So I was like, maybe we can raise some money. Well, somehow that evolved, and my wheels got to spin in. And uh, we ended up building a vehicle for a kid and end up raising about $4,000 for the concert uh, and for the burn victims, uh, Camp Sunshine, uh, out of Nashville. Uh, the, the second and third one I was involved with were wounded veterans, and uh, I got involved with uh, a guy who runs a local 
uh, vet's chapter uh, in our town, and uh, he he led me through somebody that he knew that knew the people uh, were having hard times and you know just gotten back from war with uh, lost legs, and we set that up. And uh, the the fourth one was a quadriplegic. He was a customer uh, of the store. We had done uh, he had a Quigley conversion van. And cool. uh, he'd gone through a lot. His wife uh, met him after he had uh, had his accident. Had been with him for 20 years. And uh, all he wanted, he bought a Mustang like 10 years prior and had wanted to build it and fix it up for her and just hadn't had the time or the money. And life happens. And so we built the Mustang for him, for his wife, to show uh, his appreciation for his wife and everything that she'd done, taking care of him and everything. So uh, different ways with all of them, actually. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you keep referring to the store. Where do you work? And what do you do? Uh, I have been with Four Wheel Parts about 10 years now. Uh, I've always been big into the off-road uh, everything, uh, even as a teenager. And I'm not even going to tell you all how many times I applied for Four Wheel Parts before they finally you know, <laughs> g- gave me a chance. But uh, in the last 10 years, uh, I've been a regular salesman. I've been the assistant manager. I've been just a regular technician, and I just recently uh, have been a service manager of the store. Uh, I've been at three different locations, um, Nashville, Memphis, and Baton Rouge. Uh, currently, I'm at the Memphis store, but uh, they've done a lot for me. Uh, it's a very loving and, and family-oriented uh, place to work. Um, and through Full Parts, something cool that I got to do just uh, not too terribly long ago, they sent me uh, to ride with B.J. Baldwin across the desert in uh, one of his trophy trucks, so... Nice. Uh, it allows you to do a lot of really fun stuff, too. Yeah, they do have some cool contests. <laughs> so how has Four Wheel Parts been able to help you with these builds and support these? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Four Wheel Parts uh, donates uh, a lot of the parts and, and uh-huh. through working there and, and having vendor support. You know, vendors are a lot of it. We wouldn't be able to do it without the, the different vendors and being associated with Four Wheel Parts. But, I mean, even the, the time to, to build them and, you know, uh, we typically unveil them on a, one of our big sell days. So, you know, we, we're able to raise money as well uh, at the sell days for, you know, whatever the charity is that we're, we're doing the builds for. But, um, they, and not just builds. I mean, they're, they're constantly doing different charity events and, and, and everything. So, Well, that was one of my questions, too, because if you're stealing their car or they don't even know that you bought them one, how do they know that you're working on it and how do these big reveals go? Well, typically, we, we, we do everything from hire detectives, uh, do fake police reports. <laughs> uh, one truck, we stripped completely down and took pictures of it in a field because the guy figured out he had uh, the tracking system in it, and like he knew where he could fi- find out where his truck was. So we, <laughs> we, we've done all kinds of things, uh, just like the, they, they do on that show, uh, Overhaul, and we've had to be real sneaky about it, and, and real quick, I mean, time is crazy i mean it's hard doing full frame off restorations in a week uh, i can assure you <laughs> yeah are you doing this by yourself or is somebody else helping you uh no definitely not by myself um we typically uh either have a local club or or just the the technicians and the, the employees of the store uh help uh definitely like all nighters just about every one of them is 20 hour work days and you know, scheduling and getting everything figured out on the front end. But uh, two of them we did in seven days. Wow. Uh, one of them we did in about a month. Uh, and then one of them took about a month and a half. But it was a full every single nut and bolt. And it was one that we bought and built and then gave away to the, the guy. Cool. So, Do you have a, a plan coming up for one that you're going to start on? Or are you in the middle of one right now? Or can we talk we, about uh, it? <laughs> we, we're in the middle of something right now. It's a little different than what we're used to. Uh, it's real close to my heart. I, I actually, um, our assistant manager of the Memphis store right now, his uh, 14-year-old daughter is uh, only been given, she's battling brain cancer, and she's <laughs> only been given about five months to live. And mm. We're uh, doing a whole lot of charity. Uh, we're doing a big uh, chili cook-off this weekend and a silent auction where a lot of the vendors threw in stuff, but currently we're focused on that um if you ask my wife i'll probably never do another build because (laughs) every time we do one it's you know 20 hour days and i have three kids and a pregnant wife right now uh so it's hard to to be away for that much time but uh 
I, I always am looking for something. If something comes up, I can typically talk my wife into letting me do it. Right, right. Well, is there any way that people can get in touch with you if they want to support your cause or help with uh, help out? Absolutely. Um, the one we're doing right now, the best way to help, uh, if you have Facebook, you can go log on it to find Team Cassie. It's a, a whole web page uh, about Cassie, which is that's her name. She's 14 years old. Uh, they have a GoFundMe page on there. And we're doing a silent auction on there as well. We have about fifteen thousand dollars in silent auction uh, items uh, that we've gathered. Uh, everything from lift it wheel and tire packages uh, to wheels, JK grills. I mean, anything you can imagine we, we've uh, gathered. But uh, uh, other than that, I mean, just uh, keep in contact with the four wheel parts site. We're constantly doing things on there as well. That's awesome, Jacob. Well, you can also come to our website at bowerpowerhour.com where Jacob will have his own page and if you do want to reach out to him uh, reach out to us and we'll make sure that you guys get in contact because it's hearts like these that really make a difference so thank you so much for everything that you're doing for these folks absolutely now if you know of an off-roader who rocks and gives back and maybe wants to share their story be sure to reach out to us now let's see what 30 pack Matt has in store for us today on tech and tools Brought to you by the Mopar Penzo Express Lane. Hello, Matt. What do you have in store for us today on Tech and Tool Time? Today we're going to talk about buying used parts and making sure you protect yourself and your parts with uh, making the correct choices. Uh, that's a good topic. So we've been playing around on Craigslist, quite frankly, right, with the Craigslisticon, and it's definitely added some challenges to our world. Yep. Um, the prices aren't retail, but the, the quality of the parts is also shows through in the price that we paid for them. So, I mean, Gabe paid for them, so it's kind of a – it hasn't worked out so great. Yeah, so what are some of the things that people should look for when doing a Craigslist deal? Well, whenever you're buying something used, you need to either be educated enough to figure out if it's worth what you're paying and also be able to give it a visual inspection and tell that it's in working order. Um, you know, if something's like a differential, you know, make sure that you take the time to pull the diff cover off and inspect it. If it's something like an axle shaft, you got to understand that it's probably been used pretty hard its whole life. So yeah. you can't really expect it to be like brand new. That's why they're cheaper. Fair. Um, and then other things like uh, fitment issues and, and parts not being what they're supposed to be. You just need to make sure that you're educated enough to, to know what you're buying. Yeah, yeah. It becomes a challenge, too, because people may not even know what they have, and so then they put it out as a part, and all of a sudden we think we're getting the right thing and end up with something wrong. Yeah. And, of course, we figure that out the night that we're doing the install. <laughs> yeah, and we also we also find out that installing certain parts is a lot harder than other parts. And, you know, there's not really much advantage, you know, for, for installing one part over the other. It's, it's almost identical, you know. Yeah. So what we've learned over this whole process as well uh, is, okay, so we may be paying a little bit more for a brand new part from the company, which is fine. Because you know exactly what you're getting. You know the quality, you know it's new, and you know you have a company standing behind it. Yes, and you also know that you have a warranty. Hmm. Yes. So some warranties, you need to make sure you read up on the fine print. Some warranties are lifetime. Well, if you read the fine print, it's lifetime for the original purchaser with the receipt. Hmm. So that lifetime warranty doesn't do you any good if it's used. True. Now, the other thing is parts. Um, we had just recently a problem with, one, the install on Gabe's rear Curry 60 that he bought yep. off Craigslist. And the, whoever installed the ring and pinion did a really bad job. They just threw it together, and it burned up on him. It cost him one week with a rental car and about 2000 bucks. Yep. So in the process of all that blowing up, we realized the reason it blew up was because when the 
previous owner broke an axle shaft, it destroyed the locker. Now, the, the problem, there wouldn't be a problem necessarily, but it was an Eaton e-locker, and Eaton doesn't sell parts. Hmm. So your your $1,000 e-locker is worth zero because you can't find a new case half for it. Well, what happened was that when the shaft broke, it ovaled the case half. Well, it could have been a $50 fix, but they wouldn't sell us the part. And yeah. It was just a terrible deal. You know, they're they're expecting you to rely on the warranty, but if you buy it used, you don't get a warranty. Yeah, and then if you try and get the part just individually, you can't get the part. So now all of a sudden, you're buying a whole new locker. Yep, we chose to go with an ARB this time. We spent a little more money, a couple hundred dollars more, but we put an ARB. So now Gabe has ARBs front and rear. Um, ARB is a great company. They sell parts. You can buy the little O-ring that goes in it, right? But right. you could also buy the big case half. So it's only a hundred dollars to fix your locker instead of buying a new one for twelve hundred. So you know, when you're making your choices on used parts, kind of look at the companies and make sure that they're there to support them. You know? Yeah. No, I think those are all really great tips, um, and definitely something that we've learned over the last six months working on this vehicle. And I, I think both of us have a much bigger eye, and Gabe definitely does. Yeah, I think we uh, we learned some lessons, and hopefully I can pass that knowledge on somehow. I'm not very good at describing it politely on the phone, but... <laughs> well, it's fine. Like, at the end of the day, what it comes down to when you're researching a part, especially something expensive, is, okay, does it fit for the use of my vehicle? Does it fit my vehicle, right? And then once you figure out exactly what you need, then looking at the companies that have that and understanding what they have to offer you as a long-term customer between either the parts, the warranty, the service, the customer service, and so forth. And, and also, you know, the quality of the install. And a part could be, a part could fail just because of the install. You yes. Know? And, you know, if your buddy's going to do it for a, a $50 bill, then a shop charges $300. Well, maybe there's a difference in quality there and you should look twice at that, you know? Yes. Yeah, I agree with that too. So beyond the part, then going into the install and making sure that you're working with a reputable shop that has good quality and service and takes care of their customer at the end too, right? Like it's all about customer service in the long run. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And now we'll hear from some of our fans in this week's Social Dirt Contest segment brought to you by I'm Not Just a Girl. Hi, I'm Charlene, and after going to lots of events, I found something missing. Cute girl shirts that actually fit. I said, we can fix that, and now I design a new shirt every other month for the tough girl that wants to tell the world, I'm not just a girl. Available in extra small to 4XL, you can choose between high quality tanks, tees, or sweatshirts, and we have a whole line of jewelry and gifts as well. Visit imnotjustagirl.com to see all the designs and size charts. Available direct through Etsy, Open Sky, and Amazon, or at multiple events across the country. For this week's Bauer Power Hour Social Dirt segment, we asked fans to submit their craziest towing stories. And boy, were there some scary stories out there. We're going to share a few of them with you. This week's random draw winner was Mike Cobia from Utah, who told us a trailer story involving twine. He said, I was pulling a trailer full of six canoes from Pocatello to Palisades, Idaho. At one point, the trailer passed us. It slid into the center of the road and turned on its side. We pulled over in front of the trailer, placed the ground down hitch on top of the ball as best as we could, and tied it down with baling twine we stole from a nearby fence. The farmer had hung it up there for some purpose. We don't know why, but we were able to drive another 70 miles and arrive safely. Lance Snyder from Oregon told us he had quite a few trailer hauling stories, but shared this one with us. He said, usually we leave Friday night to the races, depending on how far away we have to travel. It's usually about two and a half to five hours, depending on the track. So for some reason, I think we were waiting on parts to be delivered that had made the trip to the track with us a little over two hours away. Finally, the parts showed up, but we were tired from working long hours, so we decided to leave early in the morning. At 5 a.m., we hit the road with time planned for a breakfast stop. 
Well, we were crossing from Oregon into Washington, and I see in the mirror behind us a couple of cars swerving around, thinking nothing on it, and onward they went. Well, a few miles further, a white contractor-type pickup pulls up next to us, doing a frantic pointing like something is going on or already exploded on the trailer. Come to find out, it was a fellow racer that saw our trailer tire explode, which splattered his truck and the two cars, hence the swerving cars, with pieces of tire carcass. No problem, we got tools in the jack. Well, we'll just change it and keep going on. Then we both looked at each other and asked, did you toss in the spare trailer tire? The funny look on my brother's face led me to believe that that was a negative. So we took the tire off the other side and tied one axle up and ran on one until we could find a town to buy a tire. After five stops, we finally found a tire and wheel. Got to the track just in time to have the race rig tech inspected while still on the trailer and while we were getting our helmets and gear out to make our start time for the class. Whew, that was cutting it close, guys. Pretty cool. And Doyle Ross from New York told us his lucky escape with his trailer. He said, years back when I worked at a marina on Lake George, I was hauling a boat up Mohican Hill. It is a very steep hill with houses along both sides. Almost to the top, I had a bump and then felt a tug and a bang, and the trailer came off. The ball, and lucky for me, only one or two of the safety chains broke. I had to block the trailer in the middle of the road and rehook by myself. Not fun on a steep hill. Super glad that it didn't take off the hill and hit somebody else's house or the owner of the boat, who's head of security at the Sagamore Resort, who would not have been happy. And now for my epic trailer towing story that just happened coming back from King of the Hammers. Well, you know how it goes sometimes. You unhook your truck and trailer, so you pull out the pin, right? Well, we pulled out the ball from the truck and left the pin out. When we went to go put it all back together again, there was a little bit of distraction is what we'll say, and the pin did not get put back in the ball. So we're going along, we leave King of the Hammers, we're dumping water, we get to the dump, we dump our black and our gray, and we look underneath the trailer and notice that there is a spring mount that's broken. Okay, no problem. So I'm driving that big truck and trailer and Matt's behind me and uh, he's following. So I'm asking, hey, how does it look as we're going down the road again? He's like, well, it's a little bit of an angle, but no big deal. He's like, how's it driving? I says, well, I've had a couple ball slaps, but you know, nothing more than that. And my trailer doesn't do that. Like it doesn't ever slap on the, on the tongue. So we keep going. And we're probably good two and a half hours outside of King of the Hammers on a two-lane desolate road. And Piston starts to get sick, like he's going to throw up. He starts getting motion sickness from going up and down this two-lane road. So I start getting some, like, preparations here in order for cat puke. And notice that the pen for the trailer is in the center console of the truck. I get on the radio really fast. I'm like, Matt, did you put the pen in? Did you put another pen in? He's like, no, but don't slam the brakes. Just come to a slow halt, find a place to pull off. So I finally found a place to pull off, which was up this little dirt road because there was no shoulder on this road. And as soon as we let just a little bit of weight off the truck, um, off the trailer, the trailer started to roll back. So not even thinking because, of course, we'd already been through one piece of drama. I hadn't blocked the trailer. So I grabbed a couple of blocks. I ran back, put the blocks behind the trailer. And in the meantime, had set my phone down on the bumper. So we get everything hooked back up again. We both agree that everything is hooked back up again. I back out, back onto this two lane road, which it was desolate. There wasn't much traffic. It was just narrow. So in doing so, I had tilted everything pretty aggressively but uh, made it back up onto the road. So we're driving along. All of a sudden, Matt comes back on the radio. Hey, Charlene, did you grab your phone? I'm like, oh my gosh, no, I did not grab my phone. So I asked him, hey, who's behind you? Is there anybody behind you? Can we stop right here in the middle of the road? He's like, yeah, I got nobody behind me. So I waited. There was one car coming at us. I stopped dead flat in the middle of the road, full truck and trailer, jumped out of the truck, ran around to the back. Luckily, my phone was still on the bumper. 
grabbed my phone, ran back up. Well, in the meantime, of course, I was being dumb too. I had left the door wide open. So Piston, in all his awesomeness, had decided that he wanted to escape and jump out onto the highway. So I had to pick the cat up, throw it back in the truck, get myself in the truck, put it in drive, and take a couple deep breaths. So that was my crazy trailer story of recent. I actually have quite a few as well, and I know you guys do too. Thank you so much for sharing your awesome off-road stories. I love them. Well, if you have some awesome off-road stories you'd like to share, be sure to check out our Facebook page every Monday for this week's topic. Post your story and pictures and be entered for your chance to win an awesome Bauer Power Hour goodie bag and be featured on Bauer Power Hour right here. Oh, and there will be more, but I'll tell you about that later. And that wraps up another great episode of Bauer Power Hour. If you'd like to learn more about the guests on today's show, be sure to visit their page on our website. If you're social, like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more awesome guest content, videos, and contests. If you want to be on our show, know somebody who should be, or heck, you just want to say hi, visit the Bauer Power Hour website and click on Let's Chat to send us an email. Well, that's all we have the time for tonight. Until next time, have a great week in the dirt. Want to learn more about the guests on today's show? Visit www.bowerpowerhour.com for more information, photos, and videos. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by searching for Bower Power Hour Show for daily breaking news updates.